Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our presentation of Chicken Soup for the Soil, Sustainable Landscapes and Stormwater Management. My name is Jessica Cabina, and I will be the moderator for today's course brought to you by GBRI. Now, a little bit about GBRI. GBRI is an independent organization providing continuing education for AIA and LEED professionals. We aim to help you in your green building career wherever possible. We offer CE packages, webinar subscriptions, LEED project experience, consulting services, LEED exam prep, and the Green Barcode directory through our website. We are not owned by USGBC or the Green Building Certification Institute. While we're waiting for everyone to join today's meeting, I'd like to introduce to you GBRI's new course series for 2014 titled The Future of Sustainable Architecture. As you know, sustainability and building green are not new concepts to mankind. From, from caves and tents to huts and igloos, humans have creatively used natural materials and adapted to their surroundings since their arrival on the planet. Over the years, as technology matured and grew more sophisticated, so did the ability to exploit it for the good of people. The structures that human built became more technologically advanced and less reliance on the natural elements of our world. With the advent of advanced heating and air conditioning systems in the 20th century, it became relatively easy to alter our internal environments rather than adapt to the natural ones surrounding us. Today, we're becoming increasingly aware that the natural resources are limited, and we must live more sustainably to endure and thrive on this planet. GBRI's Future of Sustainable Architecture course series aims to reconnect today's generation with our ancestral roots. We hope to revive and implant the ideas we lost along the way while improving on them in a more localized, sustainable, and futuristic manner. The course developer and instructor for today's course is Dr. Liliana Diaz Olavarieta. She is a PMP and a LEAD AP BDNC, certified instructor with 25 years of academic research, teaching, and industrial experience in North America, Latin America, and Europe. With project experience across a variety of technology, business, and human-related fields, she leverages her academic background to deliver value to her clients in pursuit of sustainable building design and consulting projects. Liliana loves to share her experiences with students from all walks of life and often receives excellent reviews for her dedication to adding value to students through information rich and personalized learning. Some of her recent relevant experience includes course design and instructor for project management of green building projects at the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies, course designer and instructor of sustainable buildings at Ryerson University, Chang School of, of Continuing Studies. She was also recently a project manager at the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies. And finally, recently, she has created educational statistic research for World Bank in Washington. And finally, let's go ahead and get the course started. Here's Dr. Liliana Oliverieta. Section one, we start the introduction with addressing the need, key concepts, benefits and drivers for both areas of concern, sustainable site strategies and storm and rainwater management strategies. Need for sustainable site strategies. The need and justification for designing and implementing sustainable site strategies or sustainable landscapes derived from the essence of the definition of sustainability. Sustainable refers to the utilization and development of natural resources in ways which are compatible with the maintenance of these resources and the conservation of the environment for future generations. Also, sustainability of landscapes refers to the creation of self-organizing sites which need little human intervention to flourish, which mimic nature and which are thus called biomimicry strategies. 
Examples are these are the respect of natural water flows, the use of native plant species, the use of seriscaping or choice of drought tolerant plants to minimize outdoor water use requirements, and the assessment of a site before construction begins to assess potential impacts of the building on the site. For example, if we have a greenfield or an untouched natural site, we would prefer to not build on it and instead reclaim a brownfield site to build on it. Other strategies for creating sustainable sites include to change the perspective of soil as a layer and to go beyond the surface management of the soil and of surface water management to a systems-based ecological approach. This approach would include considering the water life cycle. Water in the rivers and oceans will be the surface portion of groundwater and seabed aquifers. This systemic view of the earth and water as part of an ecological system and balance is required to design holistic and sustainable landscapes. We should really be the always designing at the watershed level. We will discuss these strategies throughout the course.